Damon John, I think Ashton Kutcher, and some other famous person got together for an apparel line and they dropped seven million dollars into that apparel line and it went belly up now Damon John FUBU he knows apparel he's on Shark Tank Ashton Kutch you know pumped I mean dude's got worth what 150 180 million dollars so these are not unsophisticated investors they're accomplished in many ways on their own rights and they put this money in this company and it didn't flow Damon said you know we made a critical mistake because we thought celebrity would push the brand they had money they had experience and it still didn't work I say that to submit to you this fallacy that if you're gonna get a bunch of money uh, I had this comment about hey I got a 700 credit score make 1700 bucks per month can I get a significant loan no they don't do those big loans like they used to your income I mean you could get two maybe maybe 10 grand but I would say get your money up first I had a client who came into an inheritance I've been watching the channel right and they came at me it's like hey gee I got a bunch of money I don't know what to do with it what businesses should I start? I said, don't start any. Because after talking to this person, they realized they had no business experience whatsoever. I was like, all you're gonna do is lose your money. Don't do it. What you can do is take some money, put 95% of the money away, and take 5% and risk that. That way, if everything turns into um, ashes or catastrophe, you still got most of your money and you're good. So we go through this process, it's about two years, and we build what I call micro businesses. Small businesses that have designated purpose. And the person was really hyped because before they inherited all this money, they didn't make a lot of money. So they were having these businesses, developing business skills, and now I think, what is this, five years later, they're in a position to really take some money and put it in something because now they have five years of business experience. You cannot replace business experience with money you can't do it I know people will argue with me there will be folks who will go in the comments for you folks who come in the comments and you want to do it with me I'm gonna start asking you some tough questions if you've been listening to someone and you say well this is advice is really good I'm gonna ask you a really common sense question okay that advice is so good have you executed on that advice and if the answer is no or you don't answer that means I was right and if you lie, I'm gonna challenge you on that because here's the thing. Everybody's like getting all of this quote information and knowledge. And they're not doing anything with it. They're not building businesses, they're not putting stuff up, they're just out here pretending to be somebody. So, once again, money without experience, without a team, without the right things, you will lose it. What's that saying? A fool and his money will soon be parted it came from somewhere so the real economics of success are experience if you have experience you can get money if you have experience you can build stuff and I tell everybody stop trying and I talked about this in the earlier video stop trying to leave what you know how to do and go out here and do this other thing that you don't know how to do. You got a learning curve, you got a burn rate, you got all this stuff that's going against you, but people are still out here doing it. Like, you know, social media manager. If you love social media, you're all over Twitter, you're all over the internet, and you just love it and you do it for fun, okay, more than likely you'll probably be a good social media manager. But if you're like me, you don't give a rat's ass about Snapchat, you don't care about all these emerging platforms, you're not jumping on them, chances of you being a good social media manager are probably not that good because you're going after the money not you're going after what interests you as a person it's not going to play out well so another thing with experience experience usually takes time to get so many people are trying to get the income or the wealth generation of a decade of experience in a few days. Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Workweek, is a prime example of that. The book's good, there's a lot of stuff in there, and he tells the truth where he had worked for years, 
on his business before he was able to get that four hour work week. And that has been the siren song of everybody. It's like, I'm gonna build a business. I'm gonna make it very efficient. I'm gonna automate it. And I'm gonna sit down and do nothing. Your end goal is to not produce, not to have a purpose, not to be a part of the world. Your end goal is rooted in selfishness and laziness. Now, when have you as a person ever known anything that was rooted in selfishness and laziness to ever bear fruit? This is why so many people fail when they try to do that stuff. Because it, 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 the intentions were jacked from the beginning. The intentions were just based in basic, banal, never nothing worthy, yet they wonder why it doesn't work out. Hear me and hear me now. Start getting experience in something. If you're a young person and you don't know what you want to do, experiment. Take chances. If you're under 25, uh, I'm going to say something that's very controversial. Let me go to, if you're coming out of high school and you have no clue to what you want to do, you have no money, you're going to have to take out a ton of student loans to go to school. I'm going to say, don't go. Move out your parents' house. Yep. Be, become an adult. Get yourself a job and go out and experience life. Get on your own, date people, travel, do stuff without the protective cover of mom and dad because, see, here's the thing. If you continue to act like a child, you will be treated like a child. You can be chronologically 45 years old and people will be talking to you like you're a two year old because that's how you're acting. So go out because you're young, you're 18, and just say, for the next three years, I'm just gonna do stuff. You wanna go back to college, you can go back later. Because the thing is, if you get the wrong degree, and you spend them this money on the wrong degree, that decision can adversely impact you for two to five decades, or until you die. Don't do that. What this is about is getting experience. I had, I'm gonna see, I'm probably put it in here. If I don't put it in here, remind me. I answered this question on Quora. This person's like, I got a million dollars, and this was a few weeks, a few weeks ago. So I'll, I'll just put a link somewhere around here, and you can actually see I am giving this person the same advice. Just because you get a lot of money or you have the ability to borrow a lot of money doesn't mean you're going to be successful. It, it can really ruin you. Um, look at Trump. Everyone wants to go in like, oh, he's a super successful businessman. When you start with millions of dollars of family money, and more importantly, what did dad do? He was in real estate. What does Donald do? He's in real estate. Hello? It ain't like he woke up one day like you, living with your mom and dad in the basement, no money, no experience. He didn't start off like that. He started off with bank. He started off with experience. He started off being connected. And even with all that, he had ran into a position where nobody wanted to loan him any money because he was a bad business person and left a lot of people holding the bag. So once again, get yourself some experience. And I'll have people push back and go like, well, gee, you know, you had a business and you did this stuff, so it's easy for you to say. And I will push back and go like, it wasn't always that way. There was once upon a time, I was just like you. I didn't have any experience. I was ass out in life and I had to learn. And it took me years to learn some things. Not a day, not a week, not, no, it took years. Years, man, years. And I have to keep saying that because when people like think, oh, it's the internet. The internet, everything is easy. Everything's true on the internet. It's the internet. It's like, it's not like real life, right? Now I'll tell you a little story, a little dirty story. Now it's not actually dirty, it's partially clean. It's mostly clean. I used to suck ass at dating. Really, really bad. Bad, bad, bad. And part of it was I was shy, introverted, no self-confidence, life wasn't good. So it's really hard to approach a woman full of confidence when your life's like that. So I began to hack it. I began to watch people who were successful with women. 
and I observed that their behavior was radically different, a great departure from what I was taught. And I began to model, aka Tony Robbins, early Tony Robbins stuff is really good. And I began to act like them and I began to get the results and I felt a little confused and awkward because I'm like, I'm doing this stuff that I was taught was wrong, but it's working like a mofo. So I go on and I become really good at dating. I've really become good at setting stuff up. Then I transition online. If you, once again, this goes back to the heart of what I'm saying, experience. Because I had experience being able to walk up to a woman, make my intentions known, that when I took that online, I was crushing, big pun intended, crushing, crushing a lot. It, it, it just doesn't disappear. Now, I will say there are new wrinkles online that you can learn online and make money. Now, back to the dating thing. I had a situation where I was dating three women, and one didn't know because we weren't serious and we didn't have that conversation. And there was two that I was seeing every week. And one night, we're in bed, and she asked me this question. She's like, are you seeing other women? And I didn't even have the presence of mind to lie. I said, of course. Yes, I am. And like, what are your intentions with me? I like fucking you. That's what I told her. I mean, she were in bed, we were naked, we just did it. And she's like, is that all I'm good for? And I said, look, I'm here too. We're both doing this to each other. This isn't just like me doing all the work. I gotta say, you be putting in work. She kinda laughed. And that was the end of the conversation. And I kept seeing her and another chick for like a year. And they knew. I didn't have no drama. I didn't, let's see, once again, this is this is experience. If you are part of Facebook, Instagram, creeping, all of this other stuff where people act like immature little trolls over the most insipid things and don't develop a paradigm of living in truth, you don't know that many women, if the benefits, once again, the benefits of her being with you outweigh her bad feelings of knowing that you are having sex with another woman, she gonna stay, if you're honest about it. If the benefits, if there are no benefits, if your stroke game is weak, you ain't fun to be, no, that's not gonna work. But if there are benefits to being with you, you can pull that off in the East United States of America, France, South America, and so on and so forth. But once again, how do I know this? It's called experience, I did it. But if you haven't done it, and you're listening to all these people who haven't done it, then you're gonna go out there and continue to yield these bad, piss poor results because you're listening to folks who are operating on false narratives. In theory, it's a whole different ball game. And I know a lot of women who watch this channel are gonna be all mad. They're gonna be all up in their feelings. And how dare you say that? You're wrong. And every woman is a queen. I'm like, I submit to you, okay, if you're a queen, then every guy's a king. Shouldn't every guy be treated like royalty? Shouldn't you be kind of bringing? No. See, that's that's where the argument falls apart. You know, if we're all kings and queens, which I never believe in that stuff, then the treatment of each other should be a royal level, but it's not. I looked at what goes on in the real world, not what I pretend or hope would be happening in the world. So get yourself some experience. Get yourself an, an education, a real life education. Get to the point where you become very competent and comp have confidence in what you do. It's just a different way of going and stuff. And stop watching so much hustler porn. I was having a conversation with a client the other day. And I was just naming names because, you know, we, we, we're doing stuff together. And I was just like, hey, this person, this, this, this. You see, I don't say certain things. Like, when I evaluate an online personality, I don't look at what they say. I look at how they're living. That always tells the tale. How are they living? How does that work? Because if you're out here claiming to be making millions of dollars a year, but you live in a matchbox, and I know people are like, well, everyone you know, could be a minimalist. I'm like, bullshit. Uh, you claim to make millions of dollars a year, and then your dog gets sick, and you're doing a GoFundMe page. 
uh, you claim to be making all this money, and then you, you, you creep the Facebook page and you see normal people activity. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Folks who have money and have done well in life often have been wounded for being successful. So these people, if they're smart, or they just don't want to be wounded anymore, there's a group that don't care, you don't see stuff on their Facebook page unless their Facebook page friend list is congruent, meaning everybody's like them. So when they just like, hey, we just bought a new Bentley, it's gonna be like, oh girl, we're thinking about getting that too. You know, if the friend said it's like that, they'll put that stuff out there on social media. But if they have a lot of friends who are not as successful as they are, they will be hesitant to really show how they're living because they're gonna be judged, they're gonna be attacked, and they're gonna have people asking them for stuff. So, a lot of folks with money, it isn't like they don't want to share, it's just there's so many people who don't have money that will attack them. Like, you know, I recently hired a chef and I put that on my Facebook page. I even told the client, the client's like, I'm doing that too. And it was for health reasons. It's not like, it's health reasons and I've always wanted to have one. And it was on my goal list and I kind of forgot about it and then I actually was looking for one early this year then it just kind of all fell together recently. Now, there's a lot of folks who go hate on that. Who do you think you are? Um, why, why aren't you cooking? Uh, you can do that. And the thing is, I simply enjoy coming home and knowing in the very near future that I'm going to have this delicious plate of food that is made for me, gluten-free. That's another reason. Uh, I have a gluten allergy. And I know for a fact, and I know that people think it's like witchcraft and stuff like that, but I had a whole week of not eating it. I lost four pounds. Digestion issues have literally gone away. I have more energy, so gluten is not my friend. And that was one of the reasons of hiring the shelf is to create nutritious, low-carb food that tastes good. I don't know how to do that. I probably could learn, but I like building businesses. Building businesses pays me way more money than learning how to cook. And I have no desire. I can cook well enough to feed myself. I even have a few dishes. But I like doing business. So, and it ain't cheap. I'm not even going to sit here and tell you. It's, it's No, it ain't cheap. And this was funny conversation with that. Because she was kind of like, um, well, I could reduce. I'm like, no, charge what you charge. I've told two people that I have done work for me this week. Charge what you charge. See, I hate when people try to beat me down on price because I'm not going down. So I don't do that to other people. But once again, that's another sign of success. When you've been successful, you had to go through that hard work. You ain't trying to break everybody down because you don't have that poverty mindset. So that's another thing. And I put on my Facebook page a few people who were successful. Like, oh, that looks good. Then one person kind of like did a little hate. Uh, <laughs> And I, I just, you know, like, I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna put it out there, but that's how I'm living. And I know what can happen when you put out that you're living well, and there's a bunch of other people who are not living well, and people feel that it is offensive for you to show your life if you're successful when there's so many people who are suffering. And my thoughts on that are when I was suffering, when I was hungry, when I was losing teeth, no one gave a damn. No one cared. And I, I had to really get past that because those were my problems. They were not society's problems. They weren't my friend's problems. They were my problems. And when I put on my big boy pants and boxer shorts and realized that I needed to take care of me and I stopped hating and I stopped being small and I stopped just looking at folks like my, like I was chewing on a mouthful of spiders and just started to push, execute. I started to have success in my life. It was real funny. So I say all this that, you know, when you're looking at these folks online, look at how they're living. Go to their Facebook page, go to their Instagram, and also Google them, Wayback Time Machine, check out their early YouTube videos, check out their early blogs and stuff, because anyone who is successful now, there is a internet record. And if you come across somebody 
who has no record, you should ask yourself, why? You come across somebody who's claiming to make millions of dollars and you can't find much about them on Google, Google is your friend, ask yourself, why? That's real interesting because there's a lot of folks out there who are internet millionaires and you can't find an LLC, you can't find any evidence, you can, some of them you can't find their high school picture because they changed their name. Um, go ahead, look, look at all that stuff because you should see in the beginning it was rough. You should see that, that's normal. And then you should see a path of progression. And it's usually gonna be over three to 10 years. And then when you see that they stuck at it, they learn some stuff, then you can go like, okay, that person's cool. But when you all you see is fluff and hustler porn, you know, Lambos and Ferraris and mansions and stuff, but every time they talk, it's always high level theory, high finance, but not applicable stuff. Ask yourself why. Because one of the reasons I can be real frank with you guys is I have a consulting business that has nothing to do with this. This is something different. I, I'm completely revamping Hustlers Kung Fu. I'm redoing a lot of stuff. And I'm going to give it a year. So it's a whole different ballgame. But the economies of scale and building wealth today is easier than it used to be. But it's still hard. And you have people who in their hearts want to be rich for the sake of being rich and there is no other higher purpose. And that's when you have Donald Trump's. That's when you have Martin Sha Shaquille, the one that got con convicted of securities fraud, is throwing parties before going to prison. It's when you have these morally bankrupt people who come out in the world and get into pop culture and people like, I want to be like that because they just have to that money, but you don't know what that person's going through or will go through stacking their life like that. I mean, I know it's a little preachy. It's a lot preachy, but I'm just telling you how, what I learned because I used to be like that. I was like, you know, go to the back of these magazines, order these get rich quick schemes and lose my money and be disappointed because it was just a whole bunch of gobbledygook, yakety yak, lack. there's real no substance. None, <clears throat> because becoming wealthy and becoming an entrepreneur has literally become a sport. That's what it is. And you know, you got your first round draft picks, you got your superstars, but basic successful business tactics are often very boring. And it takes just a lot of hard work. This is the CEO's chair. This is where the decision maker sits. This is where the boss man sits. This is where the rubber meets the road. How do you get into this chair? Well, we'll discuss that and more in just a few seconds.